ട്രൈസ് ദ വേൾഡ് ജിയർലി ബിലോഡ് സിസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ബ്രദേഴ്സ് on the 92nd day of our bible pilgrimage father is here greeting you all and welcoming you to listen to the reflections of the day we are reflecting on deuteronomy chapters 30 and 31 also psalm number 50 and acts of the apostles chapter 3 in deuteronomy 30 conditions for restoration and blessings are described message is clear that the punishment that falls upon a person or a family or a nation due to disobedience to the commandments that the lord has given to them that punishment is not to destroy them but to give them grace to give them an invitation to return and to be saved that is the will of god so the hebrew word shub is repeated in this chapter almost six times so this word expresses a radical change of mind and it implies a conscious moral separation from sin and a decision to forsake it and agree with god that is shub so that is repeated six times so the chapter 30 begins with three factors of repentance first and you are living among the nations where the lord your god has scattered you you will remember the choice i gave you the first thing remembrance you should remember the lord when you are in distress you should remember the prodigal son remember <laughs> what happened when he was in distress he remembered father father's house second thing and you and your descendants will turn back to the lord that is show you know turning back to receive mercy you should go back and the third thing and with all your heart obey his commandments that is third thing is obedience so these three factors are there in true repentance remembrance turning back and start obeying him so this particular thing is repeated in verses 8 to 10 again so god himself will help you in this turning back you know because turning back to the lord and obeying commandments by your own help by your own strength you cannot do that so that's why verse here 6 beautifully describes the lord your god will give you and your descendants obedient hearts you know it's a god himself will do it you know so that beautiful thing is introduced here that you know this later prophets jeremiah and ezekiel repeatedly speaks about that inner conversion made possible by the lord himself the lord will do it inside your heart so that particular theme actually they might have found from here and it is repeated again and again or example charamaya chapter 31 verses 33 34 and chapter 32 verse 39 and 40 and in ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19 and chapter 36 verse 26 and uh, onwards so uh, this particular theme is recurring then what comes is uh another beautiful thing what we find is uh from uh words uh 11 onwards yeah the command that i am giving you today is not too difficult or beyond your reach and uh, some people may say we do not know it and it is very hard and uh, where we will come to know about this this commandment which i command you 
for this day is not too hard for you neither it is far off it is not in heaven that you should say who will go up for us to heaven and bring it to us that we may hear and do it neither is it beyond the sea that you should say who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear and do it so it is too high and it is too far and it is too hard you cannot say a reason listen it's a beautiful thing words 14 so in all these words what we find is commandment the law the commandment but now words 14 but the word is very near you who the word is very near you it is in your mouth it is in your heart so that you can do it see there is something a great revelation someone is hidden here who is that the word first time here we find the word otherwise everywhere moses is using the commandments the laws the ordinances and here when you find you know people are saying it is very difficult the commandments are very difficult the laws where it is written you have a nor very far how it is like meaning when you find it is very far it is very distant from you when you find that it is very hard then something will happen the word is near you and in you hallelujah and what is this word the self revelation of god is the word he reveals himself to anyone who seeks him with the whole heart that's what jeremiah 29:13 says and this word is the self realization of god uh, uh, you know completely and fully revealed in the person called jesus christ who is the word hallelujah so moses is actually answering you know uh, you know prophesying about jesus christ the coming of the lord or through moses holy spirit is revealing about the coming of jesus who will ultimately help you the 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 sacrifice of jesus is that which is going to help us to obey that the spirit of obedience that is holy spirit will come through jesus that is the word so in romans chapter 10 verses 5 to 13 st paul is quoting these verses from 11 to to uh, 14 st paul is quoting exactly these verses from deuteronomy and declares that what is spoken here is about the law uh, uh, what is spoken here about the, uh, about Uh, uh the word is about jesus it's accomplished in jesus so that more so what moses said about the commands are all finds its fulfillment in jesus christ who will help us to to be obedient if not it was very difficult because out of fear but when the word the word becomes flesh and it will be inside you and that will create you know generate love and out of love you will be automatically be obedient praise the lord see what moses taught the people in his long three sermons in the book of deuteronomy they are all summarized in his concluding statements here in this chapter verses 15 to 20 see i have said before you this day life and good death and evil If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you this day by loving the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his ordinances then you shall live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you are entering to take possession of it but if your heart turns away and you will not hear but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve the might declare to you this day that you shall perish we shall not live long in the land which you are going over the jordan to enter and possess i call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that i have set before you life and death blessing and curse therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live dear ones the whole of deuteronomy is leading one to this moment 
the necessity of taking a decision for war, a decision for life. See, so that is why in this few verses, laws, blessing, curses, call to obedience are all squeezed into this, you know, concluding invocation. A choice, a free will choice, a deliberate decision. That's what is required to be taken. Only two possibilities, live in obedience or die in disobedience. So the whole Deuteronomy is leading a person to this this pericope or this five sentences. See, Moses is not just like any indifferent arbitrator, but he 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 puts his heart and mind and strength into it. Like you know that people may obey the Lord at any cost. It's not that he was simply pronouncing judgment whatever he heard from the Lord. No. But his heart is always for the people. His heart is for them, with them. And he wants that at any cost they may obey. He knows that he is going to die. He knows that he has not uh, got, you know, much time left to correct the people and to encourage them and also plead for them. Like So he, he, he knows that, you know, you know, he has not much time. So is not yet satisfied with what he gives. So he's again and again trying to pour out everything. He's trying to show his own heart for the people. He wants that they should live by obeying the commandments. So the essence of the laws he gives in three words, in the last two words in this chapter. The essence of all the laws he is squeezing into one sentence, verse 20. Loving the Lord your God, obeying His voice and cleaving to Him, that means life to you and length of days. Hallelujah. So three things. Loving the Lord your God, obeying His voice and cleaving to Him, clinging to the Lord. See, the true religion, the true spirituality is not a feeling. It is not a, you know, matter of some emotional satisfaction. Uh, it's not about doing something today, like, you know, but it's all about a commitment. It's all about a, a life, you know, given to the Lord. It permeates your whole life, every area of your life. And that is why these three things together summarizes it. What? Loving the Lord. Obeying his voice and cleaving means clinging to the Lord. That is that is love of God. That is true religion, essence of religion. That is called a spiritual life. And he is summarizing in these three words. Remember these three key words. Praise the Lord. Chapter 31 of Deuteronomy. Historically very important because something great is happening here. The baton of authority is being handed over to Joshua. Ministry of Moses, one of the greatest prophet the world has ever seen. And in the biblical history, one of the greatest figure, greatest man of God. And a great shepherd who literally loved his people. And such a man is accomplishing his ministry in this chapter. Verse 7, Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the presence of all the people of Israel, Be determined and confident. You are the one now who will lead these people to occupy the land that the Lord promised to their ancestors. The Lord himself will lead you and be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. So do not lose courage or be afraid. So that's the first thing. Second thing, the laws and ordinances are written down and handed over to the Levitical priest. Verse 24, Moses wrote God's law in a book, taking care not to leave out anything, taking care not to leave out anything. When he finished, he said to the Levitical priest who were in charge of the 
Lord's covenant box, take this book of God's law and place it beside the covenant box of the Lord your God. So, these two things are accomplished. This chapter actually has seven small, small sermons or teachings. The first three are of Moses. The first, Moses to the people, verses 1 to 6. Second, to Joshua, 7 and 8, just now we heard. Then third, to the Levitical priest and leaders of the people, verses 10 to 13. Then comes the center of this chapter, that is verse 15. And Lord appeared to them, means two people, Moses and Joshua. Because verse 14, Lord said to Moses, you do not have much longer to leave. Call Joshua and bring him to the tent so that I may give him his instructions. Moses and Joshua went into the tent. The Lord appeared to them there. So that is the center of this chapter. These two leaders, you know, the predecessor and the successor. And God in the midst. It's a beautiful moment in the in the life of Israel. Hallelujah. So that is 31, 15. That's the center of this chapter. Then what happens, then what remains uh, is uh, three, uh, three, three oracles of the Lord. You know, three teachings of the Lord. Two uh, times to Moses and once to Joshua. The Lord said to Moses, 16 onwards. So then once he speaks to Joshua, then the final preaching, you know, the final sermon, Moses to the Levitical priest, that is verses 26 to 29. So it's a prophetical warning about uh, the future. So with this, this chapter is over. So we are almost coming to the end of Deuteronomy, a beautiful book which is, which is touching the heart of each one of us. Praise the Lord. Psalm number 50 is a picture of uh, a court of law. You know, court is a place where it is decided if someone has done something, you know, right or wrong. In this Psalm, Israel is in the court of the Lord. So verses 1 to 6, God is calling his people to his court of law. Judgment will be pronounced. Judgment is based on two things, two commandments, you know, two things. In order to understand that, we need to know uh, Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 onwards. Jesus said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, Depend all the law and the prophets. Praise the Lord. So, based on these two, the verdict is given. And so, verses 7 to 15, God says that they have not obeyed the greatest first commandment. That is, they have not honored their God sufficiently. Then, verses 16 to 21, the second part, their God says that they have not obeyed the second greatest commandment. They have not loved their neighbors. So one after another, he points out what they have done against their neighbor. So these two commandments will be the basis of final judgment. Say hallelujah. Then verse 22. Listen to this if you are, you, the, you who ignore me or I will destroy you. Meaning, if you continue in the disobedience, you will be lost and destroyed. Then the final verse, verse 23. Giving thanks is the sacrifice that honors me. So meaning, honor the Lord. Praise is the sacrifice that God wants. So actually this is called love. Expression of love is your praise. So love the Lord. Cling to the Lord and you will be saved. So that is the final solution for salvation. Love and cling to your God. Praise the Lord. Coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, we find Peter and John while going for the three o'clock prayer into the temple. And there at the entrance, they heal a lame man by the authority of Jesus Christ. Authority of the name of Jesus Christ. So later inside the temple, in the temple, 
uh, in the presence of this person who was healed, when many people have gathered around, Peter uses this chance to proclaim the name of Christ and his authority and the truth of Jesus Christ. He's proclaiming. And in his preaching, he acknowledges that what Israel has done to Messiah, Jesus Christ, was in ignorance. And so, if we repent and come back to Jesus, he will forgive sins and bless his people. That's what he's preaching. So using the healing that God has given to this man, Peter is proclaiming the good news and solemnly pronounces the invitation for repentance, repentance for salvation. Praise the Lord. So it, today we find the same theme is running in uh, Deuteronomy, Psalm and Acts of the Apostle. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit.